Hello everyone, this is Robert and this is my GWIC HEPA air filter. I use this on my CO2 laser as well as my fiber laser and overall I really like it. However, it has one major design flaw. So with the power and magic of 3D printing, we're going to get this thing fixed. These HEPA air filter units are pretty straightforward. You basically have a big fan in the bottom, and then you have a stack of filters. It pulls the exhaust through the filters, and you get nice, clean air. The downside to this unit, and I think most of the units out there, is you basically come in through this single three-inch hose on top. So everything comes in through here and then hits the pre-filter, and you end up basically just clogging the center of the filter. There's not so much here, but there's a lot right there. And I learned very recently that this unit does have some sort of logic inside that measures the resistance coming in. And when the resistance is too high, it'll start beeping at you, warning you that your filter is probably clogged. So we need to fix this issue. So I took a closer look at this and took some measurements and I found that if I just basically cut out this center section, just completely remove it. I can make this kind of tall ducting that the hose would be up here off camera and it would just kind of funnel everything down into the actual pre-filter itself. I can move this in just a little bit so this still covers the edge of that filter. I don't want to go past it. So took some dimensions here. Let's go work some things up in SolidWorks and kind of see what design we can come up with. So for this video, I'm trying something a little bit different. I'm doing a time lapse of the SolidWorks design and then just narrating over it. So we'll see how that works. For all my designs, the first step is just to make a lot of sketches. I'm taking all the information and all the dimensions that I recorded and just putting them into sketches so I can kind of better visualize where everything sits. And I'm making some decisions about how big that opening is going to be mostly due to how precisely I'm going to be able to cut out that metal. You know, what kind of overlap, what kind of gap there is going to be. I selected like 10 millimeters. I think that's a pretty good gap from the whole location. So pretty straightforward stuff. Once I get these sketches in place, I can use the lofted base tool in SolidWorks to kind of connect them and form the actual duct structure. And that's just a matter of kind of cleaning things up. I'm making the base a little bit wider and thicker for a couple of reasons. One, just to kind of give me a little bit of extra play. I don't want to have any gaps that I'm physically seeing when I cut it out. And also this will give a better um, adhesion for the print while it's printing. If I keep this really, really thin, then I might have issues with it not sticking and falling over midway through because this is probably going to be a relatively long print. And then, of course, the last step in any 3D modeling is just to go take a big bucket of fillets and just pour it over everything. <laughs> fillets do help um, 3D printing, though. Printing sharp edges really never turns out that great. So even adding like a quarter millimeter or a half a millimeter fillet on outside edges will help the printer print a nicer, smoother radius because it's just not ever going to do a crisp 90 degree angle all that well. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. I'll probably make some little final adjustments on the overall height of everything because I'm just not really exactly sure how long this will take and what the angles are going to look like for overhangs, but this is the general design process and it took about 15 minutes. I think this time lapse was about 13 minutes, so it really doesn't take that long to design a part like this. Since this is such a big part and it's going to take so long to print, I'm going to make a quick template and this will serve two purposes. One, I can test the fitment of everything and make sure everything lines up the way I want. And I can also use this as a cutting template when I cut out that center section. And this is one of my favorite uses for my CO2 laser. It takes no time at all and it gives me a nice accurate template. To make one of these files, all you do is select the face in SolidWorks and then export that as a DXF. And this is just the bottom face of the print. Mm -hmm. 
I'll admit I don't always get these dimensions right on the first try, but for this one it was relatively easy and I did get it right on the first try. Everything lines up nicely. I added a little bit of extra room on the screw holes and yeah, everything looks good. So now we can use this template to mark the inside location. This will be what I end up cutting out of this lid. And then once all that's good, then we can get this printed. This is probably one of the largest parts I've ever printed on the XL. The actual part itself is about 350 millimeters at the widest, and the bed can accommodate about 360 millimeters, so it's getting pretty close. I think it can handle a lot more overall height, but it's about 200 millimeters tall. And I'm just printing this out of PLA because it's not really going to be in, under any real stress or strain. It's not going to be in UV. There's no load on it. So PLA, I think, is perfectly fine for this. And I'm not sure if it was the printer or the filament, but this really isn't all that nice of a print. I did some testing initially. I'm printing this with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, which ended up taking about 20 hours. And I was thinking, eh, I can cut that down by swapping out to a 0.6 but I still am pretty firm that the Prusa XL just isn't made for a 0.6 millimeter nozzle. I swapped out to the 0.6, did kind of a test print of just like one corner, and the quality was horrendous. I had to slow it down to 60% of the print speed just to get it to be reasonable quality, and it was still having a little bit of issues. So I switched back to the 0.4 millimeter and just dealt with the 20 hour print, and it's still, just okay. The seams are a bit rough. There's definitely some kind of patterns and ringing throughout it. I'm not sure if it's just the geometry. I'm also not sure if it's the cheap filament. This is just kind of a cheap Polymaker PLA. I did notice with some filaments they don't like being printed at high speed, but the XL really isn't all that fast. So yeah, not thrilled overall with this print, but functionally it will be fine, I guess. So before I cut the top off, let's kind of get a better idea of how it rests in there. Nice, that will be perfect. So when it's on top of the lid, we'll be just funneling everything right around the outside edges. So yeah, all that's left to do is cut the lid up, mount this on, and we should be good to go. To cut out the center hole, I'm using a jigsaw and jigsaws are almost never the right tool for the job, but for this particular instance, it's the right tool for the job. And if you hate using jigsaws like I do, I will say that the Bosch is by far the best jigsaw on the market. It has almost no vibration to it. It actually works the way you'd expect it to work. It doesn't constantly catch and jump around. It's a really, really nice jigsaw. That being said, I always hate using a jigsaw. I'd rather use almost any other tool out there, but if you have to jigsaw, the Bosch is a good way to go. And I got this like mostly to the lines. I definitely went over a little bit and under a little bit, but it doesn't matter. I'm gonna be using some gasket material around this. It'll be just fine. As long as I don't get too close to those mounting holes, everything will work out. Some YouTube channels, they might, you know, do all this perfect and get a file out. Nah, that's, that's not what we're doing here. I'm not breaking out any files for this. Before I attach the duct to the lid, I'm using some of this weather stripping along the outside edge of the duct, and that'll help form a much better seal between it and the lid. Because this is going to be always kind of, you know, sucking air through it, the last thing I want is some weird high-pitched whistling out of the side of it. I'm not going to tolerate that very well. So a little bit of the weather stripping will help prevent any of that from happening. And the only thing left to do now is just to screw it down into the base and get it mounted onto the air filter. I was originally going to do a couple more mounting holes, but I really didn't want to hack more into this lid than I really had to. And then, you know, it has to have new features on. It was just easier to do the existing four mounting holes. And I think it'll be perfectly fine, especially with this gasket. And yeah, everything went together just fine. I wish the print looked a lot better, but it is what it is. 
So we end the video where we started on the floor in my workshop. Functionally, I'm happy with how this turned out. However, I'm still not really happy with some of the prints coming off the XL. Some really simple things like this end up looking really nasty. I mean, this just really isn't that nice looking of a print. It's PLA, it wasn't crazy fast. It's not a very difficult model by any stretch of the imagination. So I'm just not sure what it is. And the 0.6 millimeter nozzle test was far worse. This was actually the much nicer of the two. So I'm just not really sure what's going on. I do know that if you slow it way, way down, things do improve quite a bit. So I think it has something to do with just the nozzle melting. It has a very small melt zone and it just kind of can't keep up with some of these larger prints. Who knows, something I gotta figure out. Time will tell if this duct does a better job at directing all of the stuff more around the outside of the filter. I can't see why it wouldn't, but hopefully this will give me much more life out of these filters, which is what I'm looking to do. So thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.